Hello all, welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, we will be learning about the nested for loop. So earlier we learned about for loop and how to use it. But when would we actually use a nested for loop? That's something which we will try to understand. Now, whenever we want a loop to be executed inside another loop, that's when we use a nested for loop. So in the case of a nested for loop, the inner loop is nested inside the outer loop. Nested loops are useful when for each pass through the outer loop, you need to repeat a certain set of actions within the inner loop. Let's take this example. We have a team here of salespeople. There are four salespeople here and each of these salespersons task is to create a sales report and the client visit report on a regular basis and share it with their senior. This is not a practical example. However, just to illustrate how a nested for loop works, I'm using this example. We shall work on some practical examples when we, when we work on some exercise problems. All right. So here in this case, what we want to do is we want to look through each of the sales person here and see if each one of them have submitted their sales report and client visit report. So to do that, we first call the outer for loop. So here in this case, team is the outer for loop. So if I say for I in team, let me just print what exactly we get with this so that you're clear what is happening here. So once I execute these two lines, and now if I execute for I in team print I, it is just printing each one of them. Uttam, Nikhil, Ravi and Bhavesh. Now what we want is when we are inside the for loop, we want another for loop inside this for loop. So if we say for J in, now here we want the second vector. So we say task and now here, if I just print J here, let's say I'm not using anything else and let's see what happens once I execute this for loop. So sales report, client visit report, sales report, client visit report. So this is getting repeated how many times? One, two, three and four. So just to understand what exactly is happening, let's also print I here. So once we are calling the outer for loop, I'm just printing what exactly is happening. And then I'm executing the inner for loop. Once I click on the run button, so it is first printing Uttam. So for I in team, so it is first calling this entire vector and straight away printing I. So first it is assigning the value of Uttam to the variable I and it is immediately printing Uttam here. And then it is going to the inner for loop. So here for J in task. So these are the two tasks and J in task and it is printing J. So here it is printing sales report, which is this one. And then the client visit report, which is the, the second report. And then it is printing nickel. So once it is done with all the vectors inside the inner for loop, which is J in task, it moves out of this particular for loop and again comes back to the outer for loop. And then it reads the next person in that vector, which is Nikhil. And it then prints that person's name. And once again, it starts reading the inner for loop for J in task. So in task again, you just have these two. So once again, after printing Nikhil, it prints sales report and client visit report, which are part of the inner for loop. And once we have this done, it again moves out of the inner for loop and again comes back to the outer for loop and then reads the next person, Ravi, then prints these two tasks and then comes out and prints the last person's last salesperson's name, Bhavish, and then once again, it prints the two tasks. So this is how a nested for loop works. Now here, it may not always be I and J, it could be anything. It could be A or AB, it could be anything. As a standard practice, we use I and J, but you are free to use any other variable name here. So what happens in the nested for loop is it first 
calls the first element in the outer for loop and after that only after it completely executes the inner for loop which is this entire thing that we have here it again comes back to the outer for loop and then it would call the next element and once again execute everything that is there in the outer for loop and then again come back and so on and so forth so this is how a nested for loop works now since it is looking a little cluttered let's say if we use something like a cat there is a function called cat and inside that if i just pass slash n which means a new line operator now if i just execute this it now gives me space between all the salesperson so once it prints the first element in the outer loop and then after it completely executes this inner for loop it then checks what is there after that which is the function called cat here so it says it's a slash n which means you have to create a new line so it creates a new line here and then it goes to the outer for loop and then it would print the next element which is nickel and then it would execute what was there in the inner for loop and once again after that it creates a new line element here so this is how the nested for loop works and if we want to create a space in between after it is done with the inner for loop before it calls the next element in the outer for loop if we want to create a new line in between this is how we do it exactly after the execution of the inner for loop all right now moving on to python so here once again i have the same team and task variables created in python as well we have the four sales people and the two tasks that they are expected to submit on a regular basis so here we would be calling the outer for loop first so for i in team and then in python we use the colon operator instead of the curly braces as we use in r and then once you click on the enter button it all automatically is indented and we have to continue from there let's just print i to understand what is happening so here it is just calling the first four sales person's name it is just printing one sales person after the other let's create a for loop inside the outer for loop let's create this inner for loop for j in task and now here once again it gets indented because we have used a for loop now here if i want to print just the task just say print j and it would print just like it happened here it prints the task four times now this definitely looks confusing so what we can do is let's print i here print i so what we would do is it would just call uttam first and then it would print these two tasks come out it would call nikhil print these two tasks and then come out it would call ravi and so on and so forth so if i just execute this this is what is happening now just to ensure there's a space just like we did over here we can use the print statement here now the way to do that is now if i click on the enter button it would still be part of the inner for loop now if i print an empty space here like this what would happen is every time it executes the inner for loop after it calls sales report which is j here in the task the first task it would print this empty line so sales report there's an empty line and then it would call this client report and once it calls a client report again it prints an empty line so this is what is happening here so we don't want it that way so what we want is after it completes the inner loop we want an empty line to be printed so since it is tabbed here since it is indented here it thinks python thinks that this is part of the inner for loop so just to ensure that python doesn't consider it as an inner for loop we have to click on the backspace so that it is now at the exact indentation of the for loop so this means now this is part of the outer for loop so if you see here this print i and print j are part of the outer for loop and so is the inner for loop here so now if i execute this shift plus enter so now what is happening is it is first calling the first element in team which is uttam and then it is calling the inner for loop which is task 
and it is printing one after the other sales report client visit report it has printed now since the inner task all the elements are complete it now comes out of it and once it comes out it sees a print statement and here it's a blank here so it prints a blank statement here it prints a blank line here now it has got no way to go so what it does it goes back to the outer for loop just checks with the outer for loop if there is anything more to be printed or executed so here it sees it has only printed uttam now it goes to the next next person in the team which is nikhil so once again it prints nikhil like it did here and then once again it executes the inner for loop so just like it did earlier it prints whatever is there in the inner for loop so sales report and client visit report and then once again once it is done it comes out of this inner for loop and then sees whatever is there after that it sees a print statement print blank so it prints a blank line and then once again this nesting or the loop is going back to the outer for loop and this process continues till the outer for loop and the inner for loop elements are completely executed so the gist is in the outer for loop it will call the first element and then only after it completely utilizes all the elements in the inner for loop it again goes back to the outer for loop and then calls the next element in the outer for loop and then once again it executes all the elements in the inner for loop and then goes to the outer for loop so this is how a nested for loop functions we shall try to use more practical examples in our exercise section so that we get a better understanding of its applicability all right i hope you found this tutorial useful if you are liking my tutorial please do subscribe to my channel so that you get an immediate update as and when i upload new tutorials if you have any doubts questions feedback suggestions please do post them in the comment section see you in the next tutorial thank you very much